All right, so welcome back. This is going to be our very first screencast for fourth quarter, and we are going to start off this quarter by talking about another type of nucleic acid that's very similar to the DNA that we had talked about towards the end of third quarter, and this nucleic acid is called RNA. Now, what we need to think about here is we need to think about that there is lots and lots of information coded in that DNA. But what we need to do is we need to be able to take that information and actually produce the proteins that are used to build that organism. And so in Chapter 13, that's what we're going to be looking at. Now, in Section 13.1, we are going to look at the different types of RNA. And then we're going to look at the special process called transcription, which is going to take that coded message on the DNA and change it into a form, which is going to be RNA. RNA that can actually be used to produce the protein. So the very first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we establish what is the role of RNA. And as we had said before in the previous screen, RNA is a nucleic acid. And remember, nucleic acid is a macromolecule, so it's a really big molecule, and we're talking about a polymer. So remember, a polymer is a long strand of monomers. In other words, those very small, tiny bits that make up that long chain. Now, RNA is the nucleic acid that puts the genetic code into action. So again, we're taking the information from the DNA and changing it into a form that can actually be used to produce the proteins that we're looking for. So like DNA, it does consist of a long chain of nucleotides. You're to notice a lot of terms that should be familiar to you from third quarter. So over here on the right you can see that we have an example of an RNA molecule and again it's really similar to the DNA that we've already looked at. Um, one of the main differences is that instead of being a double-stranded molecule we actually have a single-stranded molecule. But again it's still made up of nucleotides and again on the backbone of this particular molecule you're still going to see these sugars phosphates, sugars, and phosphates that are going to make their way down the backbone. And all of these little um, sort of like branches that you see kind of branching off to the middle of the molecule, those are going to be the nitrogen bases that we had looked at in chapter 12. Now, the coded instructions are going to tell the cell how to build proteins. So you need to understand that there's lots and lots of different types of proteins in our body that are used to build structure and to produce various substances that we need to stay alive. So if you look, it says, number one, a copy of the RNA is going to be made from that DNA. So what we need to think about here is we need to th think about making a, what we sort of consider, a disposable copy of that information. So it's disposable because you want to make sure that you protect the information in the DNA. In other words, that DNA is going to stay in the nucleus. But we need to be able to send a copy of that information out so we can build those proteins. It says these instructions are then used to direct the construction of proteins, which again, as we had said, are going to determine the characteristics of that organism. Now over here on the right you can see sort of a, a representation of what a protein is sort of looking like or how it's kind of put together. We had looked at proteins back in chapter 2 at the very beginning of the year. And as we had said before, proteins are really large molecules. They fall into that same category as nucleic acids. And if you notice, we have lots of different colors here. Each of those represents a different strand of protein. So instead of being maybe a single strand of amino acids, which again are going to be those um, little bits that make up that long chain, that protein, we can actually have several um, chains that are put together to produce one type of protein. So they can sort of vary in their structure. Structure. But you can't produce the protein until you get the information from the DNA, and that's what that RNA is going to do for us. Now, I sort of alluded a little bit in the previous screen that we need to make sure we understand the difference between DNA and RNA. And there's really three important differences. The first one being that the sugar that you would find in RNA is not deoxyribose. Remember, DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. And so the sugar that we would find in this molecule, and you can see this sugar down here, is going to be um, deoxyribose. And in RNA it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to be looking at the sugar ribose. And so we're going to take that deoxy prefix off. So two different types of sugars that we're looking at here. Now as we had said, RNA is going to be single-stranded. And again, you can look over here on the right, you can see the single-stranded nature of the RNA molecule instead of the typical double-stranded arrangement that we had looked at in chapter 12 with DNA. And the third important difference is that RNA actually contains a different nitrogen base than you might find in DNA. 
So in RNA, you're going to find the nitrogen base uracil, and that uracil is going to replace the thymine that is normally found in what you would consider typical DNA. Remember we had said there's three parts to DNA. You have the phosphate, you have the sugars, and you have one of these four bases. But in RNA, you have the cytosine, just like DNA. You have the guanine, you have the adenine, but instead of thymine, we're going to have the nitrogen base uracil. So when you talk about RNA, we need to understand that there's actually three main types of RNA. And remember, the RNA's function is mainly to create a disposable copy of a segment of DNA, because that information on the DNA is going to be used to produce that protein. Now the first type of RNA is going to be called messenger RNA. Sometimes we abbreviate it with a small m RNA. And this type of RNA is going to be used to carry the information found in the DNA to other parts of the cell. And those other parts are going to be used to actually help build that protein. So up here towards the upper right, you're going to see an example of a messenger RNA. So this sequence of nitrogen bases was coded from one side of that DNA molecule. Now the second type of RNA is going to be ribosomal RNA. So it's going to be called rRNA. And this type of RNA is probably maybe a little bit familiar to you because we had talked about ribosomes that are found in the cell back in chapter 7 when we looked at cell parts. And this is going to be the site where the protein is actually produced or created. And this is an example of what a ribosomal RNA might look like. Now the third type is going to be the transfer RNA and it's going to be tRNA. It's going to be how it's going to be abbreviated. And this is going to be used to transfer each amino acid to the ribosome as we create that protein. So right up here you can see an example of that amino acid. Now you might wonder why amino acids are important because proteins remember again it's a polymer so it's a long chain is going to be made up of lots of little segments and so you would have lots of little units of amino acids put together to produce that protein. And so we need to have a way to actually transport those amino acids to the ribosome so we can make the protein. And that's what the transfer RNA's job is going to be. Now when you talk about the synthesis or the making of the RNA, we need to think about a process called transcription. All right? So transcription is going to be a, basically a process where the DNA is going to serve as a template. And when we say the DNA, we're actually talking about one side of that DNA is going to serve as that template. And that's a word that we had used back in chapter 12. And in this case, transcription is going to be used to produce what we consider a complementary RNA molecule. And in this case, we're producing a messenger RNA molecule. So that's all going to take place within the nucleus. Now, within the nucleus, what's going to happen is after you build that RNA molecule, it's going to actually move into the cytoplasm because the actual um, building of that protein is not going to occur in the nucleus, it's actually going to occur in the cytoplasm. Now there is a special enzyme that is required to actually build that messenger RNA and it's called RNA polymerase. Now back in chapter 12 we had talked about DNA polymerase and that type of polymerase was necessary to add nucleotides to that DNA replicating strand. So in this case we're looking at a different type of polymerase. And so in, what we're doing here is we're looking at a special type of enzyme that's going to be used to again build a strand but in this case we're building the messenger RNA strand. Now there's a couple of special areas on the DNA strand that are really important because what these do is they actually tell the RNA polymerase or that special enzyme where it needs to bind to actually build that messenger RNA. And so these are called promoters. So it's kind of like, you know, when you promote something, you encourage something to happen. And so these are specific base sequences that say, okay, this is a good point to start to actually build the messenger RNA necessary to build a certain protein. So again, these are signals to start making the messenger RNA. Now there's also actually similar sites that are going to cause the transcription process to actually stop as well. So we have a promoter that's going to begin the process process and there's actually might be a segment at the end that's going to be used to stop the process. Now like everything else things need to be edited and so typically when you build that very first messenger RNA, we oftentimes call it the pre-messenger RNA, we consider this sort of like the first draft of RNA. 
And so typically there's going to be a little bit of editing or changing that's going to be made before we can use that final strand to produce the protein that we're looking for. Now if you notice it says the portions that are actually cut out or actually edited or taken out of the strand, these are called introns. And you can see the introns that are sort of represented up here by these light blue bands that you see in this DNA strand. Now the ones that are actually kept, these are the ones that are called exons. And so this right here would be considered an exon. So what we'll do is when we're building that messenger RNA strand from that DNA segment, these are going to be the parts that we're actually going to cut out. And once they're cut out, we need to make sure that we can splice back those exons. And so these would be considered the exons of that messenger RNA. And so then once you've done the splicing, once you've actually put these areas back together again, that's when you have a complete or a final messenger RNA. And that's going to be the code that we're going to use to actually build the protein a little bit later on. All right, so what we've done so far is we've actually only looked at the idea of what RNA is and actually how we get the message from the DNA to the RNA. And we haven't actually quite built proteins yet, so we're going to save that for actually 13.2. So with this screencast, as always, please make sure that you have completed your screencast notes before you come to class.